Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and this is a continuation of my playthrough of Core Space, the sci-fi miniatures game from Battle Systems out of the UK. Um, this is the start of the fourth turn, um, and where we left it is um, uh, Kaori, the civilian hacker, marked in green there. She has been at an activated as it were she's no longer acting as a civilian but she's taking two actions per the flow chart uh jace the captain is right here confronting uh, a uh, purge harvester as is uh, lars is over here confronting a purge harvester neither of them are in base-to-base uh, -base contact though so we're going to start off with the event turn so before that happens explain what I've kind of been thinking about here and my different options. The goal here is to uh, interrogate Kaori, if possible, and find out uh, which of the three terminals, this one, this one, or this one, is being used to send out the data to the bad guys, as it were. Um, so we have two options. One, we can get close to her and uh, persuade her to tell us, or we can uh, uh, incapacitate her, uh, basically eliminate her, and uh, then search her and find that information. So my two options that i was been thinking about here the last little while is with um, Jay's right now, he has line of sight to her, and he is in close range. So he has three dice that he can use and attack her. Now, I didn't want to attack her, but uh, if you remember, if you watched the last video, uh, she shot at him twice, missed, and then she eliminated Butler, a civilian who had joined our crew. So, she's proven to be hostile. So, I think I could kind of safely just go ahead and, and attack her. So, my option there would be to hopefully pull off one shot through the window. She's in cover. But I only need to land one hit. Uh, she has one armor, so I would roll three dice and hopefully get three hits, and that would incapacitate her. Uh, then I'd be able, should be able to move. I haven't measured it, but I should be able to move through that door and get to her, so that the next turn I can start off. Uh, depending on what that harvester does, but I would be able to start off uh, doing a search and finding out which of the terminals that we need to. Uh, to deal with. I could also cover with Lars here. He would be able to attack possibly that harvester and get a shot off at this harvester to give me some protection. But a lot's going to hinge, and this is this is what's great about this game, is a lot's going to hinge on what the event card does. Um, then we'll take our actions and go from there. One other thing, I don't know if this is any advanced rules, but it seems to me it would be a logical house rule. For all intents and purposes, Kaori is a civilian. Well, that other civilian, Ganique, is right there next to her. And I would think that there should be a house rule, and this is just me talking, that if, you know, a civilian sees another civilian uh, um, you know, eliminated or whatever right in front of them, that they would go into a scatter mode or something and panic and take off. But that's just something that I was thinking about at the, during the last session. So um, I'm not going to do that this time because it's not there unless it's possibly buried in the, uh, the advanced rules. But it just seems something kind of logical for the theme. That would be something I would probably house rule later on. So we're going to kick this off here and start. I, my intention is not to show the entire game uh, being played out. But we're kind of at a crisis point here. Um, the other option, I'm sorry, the other option that I had is, besides attacking her, is I could probably, just like I could move to her, I could probably move um, uh, move Jace um, and get uh, in base-to-base -base contact with her and do a persuade roll. But if I, even if I succeed at that, we are in base-to-base -base contact, she is going to attack me in close combat, uh, possibly twice. So things would get hostile for me, and I would not have 
um, any any you know any recourse now. Jace does have pretty good health. He could probably sustain it, but I'm thinking I'm going to go aggressive. But let's see what the what the event card plays out for us. So we'll start turn four, drawing an event card. And we are in, we are still in Watch Your Back. Oh, we are, we are in Watch Your Back. But I have to remember the first thing I do is place a, place a peg to advance the state that it kept us in Watch Your Back. So in Watch Your Back mode, we only have one option here, Take point. Each player may make an immediate move action with one trader. Okay, so that, that opens up some options for me. I can pick one of my traders and make a move. So I could pull J pull Lars back from here and get him maybe a little little safer away from the harvester who would definitely close with him if we can't take him out or i could attempt to get a little closer with jace to kaori and put some distance with that harvester uh, who may actually attack one of those other civilians like ganique so i think that i'm going to move jace and he can take a move action, so he can move his four. And we will just line it up. He's against the wall there. And you can't shoot through your own guy, so he wants to be through a, a... You can shoot around your own teammates, but you can't shoot through an opponent. So he's going to go ahead and just move three right into here. And let's see. I think I'll go ahead and move four and get a little bit of cover here behind this. This is what they call a, uh, it's not a turbine, it's a, uh, I forget what they call it. But anyway, it's a big piece of electrical equipment. But he does have a shot. He will have a shot at her here. Did he stay in? I'm going to keep what I got. Did I stay in short range? And I did, so that's good. Okay, so that's the event phase. We're now going to go to the trader phase. And I'm going to open... I'm going to go ahead and open with Jason. We're just going to go ahead and attack her. I don't like doing that, but that is the... Uh, she, went, she went aggressive, so she started it. So with our... Uh, with his rifle in close range, short range, he is three dice. So we're going to take... We're going to take the three dice and roll. And she has one armor. And right now she does not have any benefit of cover because she is, I'm got to the other side. So that was actually helpful for me to move there. So she is, uh, she has no cover at all. All right, so here we go. So I need two hits to defeat her armor and incapacitate her. And we got two hits. Yay. So that's good. The more die you roll, the more chances you are of getting multiple uh, exclamation points burst. And if you get two of those, you would damage your weapon. But we got the two. So Kaori is down. And so we, we do lay her down there. All right. And that's fine. And now this is where I think he would, he would panic. Jace has one more action, and he's going to go ahead and do a move so he can get in base contact with her as best he can. So let's bring the measure in, and he's going to be able to get right there, and he's in base contact, and he's gotten behind the uh, crate too. So when this guy, if he chooses to fire at Jace through the window, he will uh, have some cover. To go with his armor. Oh, and you know what? He can't fire. I'm sorry. Harvesters are, are close combat only. However, he can probably, he may be able to reach him. We will see how it plays out. Um, he does not have a, uh, 
an incidental action that he can take, um, effortless action that he's going to take here. So he's just going to uh, stay where he is. So now we're on to Lars, and we're going to see if Lars can be quick draw McGraw here and take out both of these guys pretty quickly. Uh, one thing I failed to do is he shot, so he loses an armor peg, and that first armor peg does go into the tracker, so I'm getting closer. All right, so we'll go with Lars, and he is going to uh, shoot him. He is obviously at short range, but Lars's rifle will only fire oh, attacks with two dice at short range, so we pay the ammo price, but it doesn't go into the uh, tracker hostility board and so he will attack with two bring that out of the way the harvesters have a ammo uh, i mean an armor of one he has no cover so we need two hits to take him out and we got one hit so that was not helpful so we're just going to go ahead and i think we're going to discretion is a better part of valor here so he is going to use his move action to uh, to get away and get into some cover. So we're going to measure four. That's enough to get him to the corner. And he will take his uh, effortless action to move behind the, behind the cover. So that guy will have to chase him. Uh, I think he goes in there. He will have to chase him, but should not be able to catch him because they started out apart. So they should stay apart. So that is Lars's move. We are now on to the AI, and we are going to roll for Harvesters and uh, Devastators. So let's see when that comes out. Hopefully, we will not end up with a six, where they come right out at him, or a three, where they come right out into that room. So, all right, this is for the Harvesters. And we get one on, oh, we get it on three. Okay, so we're going to take, uh, we'll take a harvester. And he's going to go out on three. Right there. And then we are going to roll for the devastators. And we get no devastators on one. So that worked out okay. So now the harvesters are going to move or take their actions and we can take them again in whatever order we want. So the first thing is to go to um, uh, closest in line of sight. That's not a purge. So what's gonna happen here is, this one's obviously closest for that one. So Ganik is in some serious trouble. So we don't really even have to measure. That's definitely less than four inches. Okay, so he immediately moves. It's in base-to-base -base contact with him, and because of that, he gets a free action, free close assault, and on close assault, he rolls two dice, and Ganik has no armor. So the Harvester's going to attack, two dice, no armor, no cover, and he gets two hits, and so Ganik is out of the game. That's good news and bad news, because now there's no one else to target but us. They will not target her. She's already down. So now they're going to target the traitors. So we have, I am in line of sight, uh, or I'm closest. So this guy is going to do a four move towards Jace. And so he's going to move two. We'll get him about inside the door. And then he's going to take another two and get just just about there. So he's coming at him. So Jace better get that intel and get out of here. All right, so looking at this uh, harvester here, obviously the closest is going to be Lars. So again, he's just going to move four, which takes him to about there. And so he's got him in his sights, but he can't get to him yet. So that is the harvester turn, or the purge turn. And as it stands right now, and so we're going to go ahead and go to the civilian turn, but there are no active civilians left in the game. So that round is skipped, or that phase is skipped. And now we are 
we're not concluded. So knocking these boxes around apparently. We're not concluded, so we're gonna go to the next round. So on to an event card. And we, uh, again, forgetting my order, misbehaving here. Let me get my peg. Advance us. We are now one peg away from being into the next start. We got one more peg and watch your back, then we'll be in the cover me stage, which will bring out even more enemies. So, gonna be careful. All right, watch your back. From relaxed to watch your back, rebel. Someone is not happy with everyone's blatant disregard for the common man. Choose an unengaged civilian at random. They make a ranged attack against the nearest enemy, then make a move in the opposite direction. Okay, so this is interesting. In this situation, there is no, there are no civilians on the board. Okay, so what happens is because there are, you can't carry out any of this order at all. There's a civilian icon here. So what that means is we're going to bring a random civilian on the board. For here we have, we, we're still leaving Kaori. She's still in play, even though she's not uh, alive or she's incapacitated. So we have basically Butler and Ganeek. And what I'll do is a one through three will be Butler and a four, five, six will be Ganeek. And we got a one, so we got Butler. And then we're going to roll to see where he comes in. And he comes in on position four. So Butler is his card is reactivated. And Butler, or someone, Butler's twin brother, is going to come back in on four. So he walks in right there. And that is only because we cannot execute any of this. So now we have to shuffle this card back into the event deck as it stands now and draw another card. So the event phase is not over. We do not have to incre increment the um, hostility tracker, but we do have to shuffle that deck and then we're going to draw another card. So we're still in the watch your back stage. Watch your back. It's not mine. A random civilian drops an item taken from the token pouch and then the character scatters. Okay. So this can we can do because we do have a civilian in play. And so what happens here is it's like he he got nailed or felt he was being observed, and so he panics, drops an item, and then scatters. So we have drawn from the pouch a... It's a weapon. It's called a baton. It means it's, if you bought it at the store, it'd be two cost. If you sell it at the end of the game, it's one. If you have it in your possession, you can sell it or use it, but its value is one. So this is a close combat weapon. So he's going to drop it right next to himself. And then, per the rules, we are going to scatter him in the direction the arrow points and the number of inches the number shows. So he is going to move basically off the board five inches. He cannot do that. So he's going to just basically move himself as far as he could into it. And I'll just go into the corner. And there he is. So that is that is our event phase. All right. So Jace, we have surrounded there. And so he is going to do a search. You may search a cargo crate to your base contact as long as you're not engaged with the enemy. And so this is the same search action that we would be taking here is, uh, is being able to search her. So, all right. So his first action is to search. And we're going to now look, we're now going to look at all the tokens and see which one is which. So this is it right here. The first one we picked is the one that's worth seven points. So that is there. So we have to hit this terminal with a shot, be in range, hit it, and then get in base contact with this and pick it up. And then all we've got to do it's actually kind of convenient is go through these doors 
and those doors and those doors nope through those doors yes and then through these doors and then into our ship so we're in pretty good shape and i've got lars already coming away so that is some pretty good news so that's his one main action his search and again discretion discretion being the better part of valor he is going to just hightail it away as best he can the downside is if he moves his four or five inches i don't know if he's going to get four inches away from that guy so it's going to be interesting so let's see what he gets um he's going to work his way around so let's get him moved here first so it was very helpful that he didn't have to move and then search this turn he was able to get that free move so that moves him to here and then five moves him right to the door that's his five, four plus his one for an effortless action so that's where that is Whew. so he's going to be in some trouble looks like at least the one unit is going to get to him and attack but he can probably withstand that but then when he moves away from him since he's in base to base contact Unless he does a knockback, waste an action on a knockback, or a close combat himself, he's going to get a free opportunity attack on him, on Jace. So, all right, Lars, that was his two actions. Um, I didn't do it on the last turn, but we should probably correctly do that. Mark that I've taken my action. All right, I think Lars is just going to run away. We have not done any searching. We have not found anything on this turn on this mission because things went kind of south pretty quick so we're going to put that on him moving through the door gets him to, through it and past it and then you know i think i think we'll go ahead and take an opportunity to search this room he's going to take an effortless action go ahead and move another inch just to give him some space from the uh, pursuing harvester and then he's going to go ahead and do a general search of the room. How you do that is you, uh, you just place a search token. But the room has been searched. Any, you can only search any polygonal room one time during the game. So when you're playing with multiple crews, they, they might get, you know, searched quickly, you know, by other, your opponents. So... You have to be careful with that. So then searching is simply a matter of taking the bag and finding out what you found. So we're going to search here, take one out, and he has found another weapon. Okay, these are some blades. They're worth, uh, you roll two dice for a close combat attack, and you would roll uh, three dice if you did a full attack. Um... It's a short sword, so it's worth three money. So he has he has a slot. He does not have a close combat weapon. So he will go ahead and just take that into his inventory, and he will be able to use that if he needs to. Uh, a, a basic close combat assault uh, only does a... Uh, ignores any of the exclamation points that get rolled on the dice. But if you do a... Uh, all-out assault um, or full power assault you will use uh, they, they can damage the weapon so they essentially break whereas a a gun will jam a, uh, a sword or something will break you can repair it it automatically repairs between missions but it's no good for the rest of the game so the current the current mission okay so that was Lars's turn he did a move he did a search and he did his effortless action to move one extra spot so he has taken his turn and we are on nobody fired any shots this round so we are on to again the harvester the purge turn rolling for harvester generation and we get one harvester on spot two. Oh, great he's coming in right here right at where we are so let us grab a harvester and put him on spot two. And then we will roll 
for a Devastator. Okay. We're supposed to be there. And now we're over Devastators. And we get one Devastator on spot four, which is unfortunately for Butler, way down there near him. And the Devastator, the big old mean energy weapon wielding dude, is going to come in right on spot four, right by Butler. So he's in trouble. But it helps us. So, all right, so we have now placed the Harvesters and a uh, Devastator in the purge phase. So we are now going to activate them again in whatever order. Uh, excuse me. It's not whatever order we want. It is uh, by rank. So in this case, uh, the Devastators are a rank two. So they will go first and then the Harvesters will go second. So he is going to go first and his first uh, action. He takes two actions and they are linked. So whatever action his, the flowchart decides for him, which in this case is going to be to attack, uh, he has an enemy within range and line of sight, poor Butler, he is going to attack twice. So bummer for, bummer for him, but that is about what is what's going to happen. This is a uh, error token from before. Um, so that's it. So he attacks with uh, three dice. Let's see. Yeah, he attacks ranged with three combat dice. And Butler has no armor. So this is going to be quick. So with the purge, I think I mentioned this in the last video, they choose their target at the beginning of the turn. And they carry out the two actions with that target in mind. So should he eliminate Butler in this shot, uh, he will not shoot again. He will not choose a new target and shoot again. He is, he's done. But if Butler survives this one, he'll have to survive a second. But the odds of him surviving this, if I were rolling these for my characters, I would roll badly. But rolling for the Purge, let's see what happens. We have three hits, Butler. Long time back in the game. Butler is again eliminated, but he brought us some goodies, but we're not going to get to him. So, all right. So the Devastator has attacked. Now the, uh, the Harvesters are going to attack. So we'll start with this one because it's the easiest. He's definitely, uh, the closest, uh, he doesn't have anybody in line of sight, but he knows this is the closest. So he's just going to move four towards him. And he goes about right there. And he's done. And now we will have this guy. Well, we're going to have this guy move first because I can choose. So he will move four right there just to get him out of the way. Now this one is going to move and he's going to move. He is in base contact and he gets that free close assault against Jace. So they attack close assault with two dice. Jace has no cover, but he does have one armor that he will use against the attack. So he attacks with two dice. That's where they are. And we're gonna attack with two and with one armor. So we got two hits. That wouldn't do anything for them. Two hits minus one armor is one hit on Jace. And so Jace loses. And so Jace loses one of his health pegs. And that is the purge phase. So now again, on to the uh, civilian phase of which there is none. And we are on to the next round. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove her because she's served her purpose now. She's out of the game anyway. And we'll take these other tokens out of the game since they're no longer a factor. And I am going to then go through and now finish this. I think you've seen pretty much everything there is to see in how to manage the AI. And uh, I'll come up with a wrap up and let you know how the mission ended, hopefully with us uh, escaping pretty quick. So we will find out how it goes. Okay, so here we are. The mission is now complete. 
and I'm happy to say that uh, Jason and Lars both did barely make it back to the ship. Um, first off, I mentioned in the first part of the video, uh, I did mention it in the video, um, but in a comment in the description, that I did make a mistake earlier with Kaori when she was up in here and she had killed Butler. She should have actually chosen a new target since he was eliminated and she should have shot at me. So the net result was even if she had shot at me, she probably wouldn't have uh, hindered me from, from still continuing as it were. She would have stayed put uh, and then the action would have played out pretty much the same. I might have been down, Jace might have been down a few, uh, a couple more health points as he ended up with two, but he could have used his health token as well. So probably didn't really affect the game, that mistake. Uh, so there's that. So how it played out is um, uh, Jace ended up charging the station that was where we knew the uh, data was being hacked from. And he made it to that. He made it to about here. Um, he used a skill to do a ranged attack uh, as a free move, as, a, as an extra action. Uh, managed to take out the terminal. Um, then moved in contact with the objective token. Collected that. And uh, that's where he ended his turn. Uh, the mistake I made was that raised the hostility meter. Um, I should have closed in on the terminal and done a, uh, done a close assault on it to destroy it instead of trying to um, uh, shoot because that put me into the cover me state uh, a little faster than I had intended to, which as you see, the uh, uh, a lot more units come out. There's guaranteed two harvesters and then you roll for the uh, devastators and the assassin and then the chance of the live one coming out, and then uh, more civilians come out. So all the civilians were actually off the board. It helped that they came out, because um, actually where they ended up uh, gave a target of opportunity to, to the purge that were there. So it actually ended up helping me a little bit. Lots of bad guys came out right now. At the end of the game here, we have five, five of the uh, Harvesters, one Devastator, and one Assassin. And the Assassin's main target is going to be, if he can see the captain of a crew, he will go after the captain of the crew and ignore anybody else in his path. If he cannot, then he goes after the closest. If he cannot see a, uh, a captain, he will just go over to the next, next one he can see, or he will go uh, toward the closest one. So he did get one shot off. Uh, he was actually... In base contact with Kaori when she or her twin or whatever just a civilian generic civilian respond and he had to go after her because uh, he was in base contact with her so that was the first line of attack so that worked out to my advantage um, the notes I have here so it was a miscue to, to increase the hostility tracker uh, also and two devastators uh, one was on one side of the hallway, one was on the other. And I choose, when the Devastator turn happens, I get to choose when, uh, which of the two Devastators attack first. And in this one on this side actually did have a line of sight to the to the civilian on the other side. And if I had had him attack across the board, and they have unlimited range, uh, he would have, uh, that would have been his turn. He would have attacked twice. He probably would have killed him on the first shot. But he has linked action, so he would have had to stay um, uh, handling that or doing that again as a second action so my mistake I had the one on that side attack and so he did and killed him and then this guy uh, came after me so the good thing that happened here this worked out really well is that uh, that devastator was had me trapped had me blocked at this door I could have tried to work around him two harvesters were here and um, Jace was still at terminal, so he's going to have to kind of work his way around. But then we had an event card, uh, intelligence, that says um, each player may choose a single purge character, rank one through three, within line of sight of one of their traders, and it's instantly defeated and removed from play. So I was able to take him straight out of the game, freed my path, and uh, then on the next turn, uh, so he moved. 
he was able to move into this room here. Now the assassin was able to make one move towards towards him and then get a shot and he missed. Uh, but this harvester was able to zip through and get a close attack on him. And then the next turn happened and uh, each of the traders was uh, little critters were attacking him, invisible little bugs, and they were just creating a nuisance. And so all purge care, all non-purge characters lost one action and cannot make effortless actions unless they have a skill stat of three or higher. And Jace does have a three, so he was able to just lose his effortless actions and continue uh, to, to take his two actions, which turned out to be enough for him to move from this harvester. Uh, he got an opportunity attack, but he'd missed and he was able to make it onto the ship and then Jace was had been standing right here the whole time waiting to provide cover if needed. He did not need to. So he was only allowed one action but that was plenty to get on the ship and we escaped with our uh, objective and one, one additional piece of gear and our hides intact. So a successful solo mission number two of the campaign and uh, fun game very 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 fun game I'm, en I'm enjoying it a lot you can increase the difficulty with more purge you can increase the difficulty with uh, some uh, security guards uh, galactic cops some gangers who will all try to interfere with you while you're doing your what you need to do so there's lots of replayability because everything comes out differently uh, where, you, where you choose to start from is going to be different. The way the cards come out is going to be different. Die rolls, of course, are going to be different. So, anyway, uh, very fun. I hope you enjoy this playthrough and have learned uh, a bit more about Core Space and how to play the solo and how easy, really easy, it actually runs. So, uh, again, thank you so much for watching. Uh, click subscribe. Uh, let me know you like the video with a thumbs up. And uh, uh, thanks again for watching. God bless you. Bye bye.